What's going on, everybody? You already know what it is. Back and forth, back at you. Xavier Porter, shoot the five live in the building. I got my young boy in the building, Mr. Rob James. AK, uh -huh. You know, what I mean? <laughs> Mr. Anna Supe. You know what I mean? Mr. Creative on that side. What's going on, brother? How you feeling? Now I'm doing good. You know, I can't complain. You know, just working through the quarantine and everything. Okay. You know? How you been dealing with everything with all that? I mean, I've been maintaining, you know, just um, working on, like, investing in new things, like, as far as, like, business cards, um, coming out with new product, trying to stay afloat, you know, like, not trying to fall off while, you know, everything is, like, on pause, you know, still just keep working and staying creative. Okay. Tell everybody about yourself and where you're from and things of that nature. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born... Well, born in Flatbush, you know, raised in East New York, and um, you know, 20, 25 years old. I'm a boxer, well, an amateur boxer, also a, a rising actor, amateur, you could say, and you know, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So you're an amateur boxer. Um, I wouldn't per se call you an amateur actor. Yeah. That <laughs> You know, I don't even know if that goes that title goes together. But you have been featured in some um some web series. You've been featured in in um the show the um what's this what is it again? The YouTube series, the Bush yeah. Web series. The Bush, excuse me, the Bush. Yeah, the Bush. And it was another one. I had like probably one scene in there that's yeah. called um, Festival, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So in a sense you're you're up and coming, you're rising, you're learning, you know, you're starting to you know, find your bones in the active field. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you're a young entrepreneur coming out of Brooklyn. What separates your, your style and, and, and your, your, your clothing brand from, from other up and coming rising, you know, brands such as like, you know, I mean, there's a lot, you know, so what separates yours from everybody else's? I say what separate mine from everybody else's, like, I basically kind of like go off of like my own style and like my own style is like I have so much different styles like I could be I could be um hip hop I could just like you know style like streetwear and stuff like that then I could be on some sometimes I have like a it may people may say it look like a, a white person style you know so like I have different dressing styles so I try to incorporate my own style with with how um I make my clothing and you know, like my brand revolves around not just one thing, like it revolves around art, music, culture. So everything that basically revolves around me, that's I try to implement that and put it within my clothing. How do you how do you how do you put to, put together your style? And is it a something that you just like kind of look at on the day to day, see what other people or what other designers, stylists, influence you to make your own type of brand? Or it's just something natural within yourself. Um, I say it's it's a little bit of the both. Like study fashion world, so like I study like high end brands, like streetwear brands, because that's the that's where my brand like um specializes in is like streetwear. But at the same time, I don't want it to just be local. I wanted to go you know global one day, you know. But I get like my inspiration from like watching things that I see every single day. And also like when I learn things from like up and coming brands, like before I never used to, I used to just put out clothing, like just put stuff together and just put it out there. But from learning from like up and coming, like not up and coming, but um, learning from high end brands and stuff, how they put things together, they put it together in collections. So that's something I started to do. I was like, I'm not gonna just throw our clothes just cause like that's that's what everybody does that's up and coming. Cause you don't know any better. You're just throwing our clothes and you just want people to gravitate to it. But for me being three years in the game, I'm starting to learn and educate myself more and more and putting together full blown collections where it's a hat that goes with a hoodie, uh, sweatsuit that goes with a hat or a jacket that goes with a, you know, different things that go with each other so you can wear it in different ways. And it's a full blown collection. It's not just 
different clothing that is just dear, dear, dear. Because a lot of people, when they look at clothing, they want something that they could wear with something else. They don't want to just, oh, let me buy that, you know, because they always want something to match with something else. So that's why I started to put things together in collections, because that's the most important. And people see the, the creativity in it. Um, who would you say, if any, are your main influences? Um, <clears throat> my main influence, you know, like they're probably on the edge right now. Some people don't like them, but as far as they work, I, I like they work is um, Kanye West, Virgil Abloh, um, Dapper Dan. Well, Dapper Dan is actually at the top of the list, but Dapper Dan, Virgil Abloh, Kanye West. And I discovered a new fashion designer yesterday from watching this fashion show. And his name is like, I think Kirby, Kirby, um, Kirby Raymond. And he has like a brand that he started in 2013. And it's like, it revolves, like it's something that inspired like by the culture of us black people. So those are like, I should say like my top four. One thing I do know about you is you're you definitely read a lot. You know, you read a lot about designs, stylings, fashion, from history to present to past, present to, you know, future. Um, where does that come from? Like, like the, the focus on understanding your craft. How does that come about? <clears throat> um, I'll say that comes from, like, when I was a teenager, like, I was always interested in, like, learning like, I'm always a person that I just want to learn more. Like, wh whichever field that I'm in, I always want to learn more, whether it's, it's boxing, whether it's fashion, whether it's whatever field that I'm in, I always want to learn more of that field. So when I get in the field, I'll be dominant. And I'll, you know, could educate others at the same time. And, yeah, like, I, I, I study, like, fashion. Like, I say, like, when it comes to, like, fashion, like, I'm a student of the game and I don't just make clothing just to make clothing. Like I actually pay close attention to like what other brands are doing, what they're lacking in, what they're successful in. Um, also when it comes to like high end um, brands, I pay attention to not just their success stories, but their, their struggle stories, like how they got to the level they was at. You know, so that's one thing, like, when it comes to, like, reading and everything, I pay attention to, like, the the coming up stories, like, because that's what's going to help me. Like, your success stories is not going to help me. You know, like, from you coming up and you struggling and going through whatever you have to go through to get to where you're at, that's the, the part that inspires me and motivates me to keep going. Now, recently, I, I know you've been reading a lot of two books in particular, I believe it's the Dapper Dan book and, um, yeah. and the Rick Ross book. What did you get from both of those books? What do you take from um, those books? Well, I haven't finished them yet, but Dapper Dan, from reading his book, I say that like, it was inspiring to me because like, from actually meeting him and to read his book, like I learned so much more about him, like from where he started from and how, he started in his basement and he was all about the community and like, you know, making clothing for like, he made clothing for like people that was successful, like, well, mm -hmm. not really successful, but they had money, you know, like yeah. drug, big time drug dealers, um, up and coming sports athletes, rappers and stuff like that. He made money for those people. He made clothing for those people. Mm -hmm. and. It was one thing that he he made. Uh, there was this drug dealer he made a piece of clothing for, but I think that was the first time he actually used like the Gucci fabric. So he had put the Gucci fabric on this garment. I think it was a jacket. And when he put it together, and then the guy seen it, the drug dealer seen it, he was like, "Whoa!" Like he was like, "Y'all like that?" Like. <laughs> <he was> like <laughs> You spend the bread on now. I like that. Like, you know, so they build that connection. And then it it got to a point where, you know, he was like his consistent customer. And then um, I think something went down where 
people wanted to kill the drug deal, like they was, and he ran in his shop or whatever, but he had to tell the drug deal, like, unfortunately, I'm sorry, like, you gotta, can't stay here, like, this is my line of business, like, mm-hmm. so you can't, like, like, you gotta go, sorry, like, so he had to let the person out, and then the guy that was working with him, that but then felt bad because he let him out, but he said at that moment, like, he was like, that's, that's his whole business that he helped build, so it's like, he can't just let somebody come in and just mess up his shop and stuff like that, so, mm-hmm. But he said from that moment, like, it helped him to grow from that moment. Like, it's so much different choices he could have choose in that one specific moment. Gotcha. But you know, that book was, it was, it was inspiring. Like, I'm still reading on it. And um, as far as the um, Rick Ross book, like, it's a lot of things I didn't even know about Rick Ross either. Like, he had a couple of... Um, well, the cops raided his house when he was like, he was a rapper already, already established. And I think it was like Meek Mills. No, I don't think Meek was there. No, he might've been there. It was Meek, um, his, I think his bodyguard and somebody else. And then he was wanted for like a, a drug, a drug case or something like that. Oh, for abusing one of his workers. And then they was just like, they locked him up and then he was just like, he tried, he had to fight the case and this and that. So he ended up doing time. And it was just like a lot of crazy stuff going on. It was just like, that. that's a great book. I, I would recommend everybody to actually read it because it's like really inspiring and you kind of learn more about Rick Ross because he's another person I, I look up to because he preaches like wealth, like, you know, you being a, young black male or just a black male in general like you got to mm-hmm. be a boss like that's something that like he, he preaches like and he shows it in his book like he really hustled hard like <laughs> he got to start like the song right yeah. <laughs> <I'm hustling. laughs> yeah. so he really hustled hard and stuff like that. so like he's really one of like the rappers i'll say like i'll look up to like after nipsey like him and nipsey is two people like i really like they inspired me, so. Okay. Um, that's actually this. I know you work on you, you you work with a lot of different athletes and things like that. You've you know helped sponsor some athletes with clothing and things like that. Um, are there any artists in particularly, maybe celebrities that you would like to maybe possibly style for, design for? Mm, um. Who you think would look nice in your brand? I'll say for Sorry, everybody in the world. Yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the goal, right? Go global, right? So I'm, I'm assuming you 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 would like to see a certain you know artist maybe rock your brand. They would look nice in it. You know, that's the question I'm asking. Well, Tiana Taylor, you know, she's at the top of the list. You know, okay. Um, I'll say Chris you, said Tiana, you said Tiana Taylor. Yeah, Tiana Taylor. Want to make sure I got that out there, okay? Yeah, you know, um, Chris Brown. <clears throat> uh, I'll say Tiana Taylor, Chris Brown. Probably even um, ASAP Ferg. Like, mm. he, he, you know, like he has a Harlem style, but he, like, he has style. You know, like I want to say ASAP Rocky because ASAP Rocky more has a different kind of style, but ASAP Ferg have like a, he has like a street style. Like, so I, I like his style. Um, no, like that's, that's probably like my top three right now. Okay, that's cool. Now, with regards to your amateur boxing career, how was that playing out with, you know, your fashion and everything? Your business, I should say. Cause it is your mm-hmm. business. Yeah. Um, as far as, mm-hmm. Everything is like good. It's just it's in slow motion right now. I plan, you know, to get back and start training and fighting again. Get a couple of um fights and stuff like that. But like to take it to the next level is like that's not really like my main focus anymore. As you know, like fashion is like something like I'm more confident in. Like, not saying that I'm not confident in boxing, but fashion became like my first love in a way you know boxing taught me to like 
in certain, well, the place I was in, you know, when I was losing friends and like family members and stuff like that, like boxing really helped me to get through that. Mm-hmm. You know, fashion something. I about it. I started doing it, and then it's like I can see myself doing it for the rest of my life. You know, because mm-hmm. creating clothing is is a form of art. You know, so but now as far as like the boxing, like it's it's going in slow motion, but you know, I'll still be associated with the sport. Like probably probably might get a couple more fights, five, ten more fights. After that, just probably become like a trainer or a mentor or something, you know, like, but I still want to be with the sport. I don't want to just have it and then just throw it away, you know, like I still want to be, you know, a part of the sport, you know, so that's, that's my thing with boxing for right now. Do you want to actually get a couple pro fights in or you just want to, you know, continue to work the amateur, 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 no, just- and then... And then, like, okay, I got a couple of pro fights in it, but you to focus on your career as a designer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would, nah, I would, I would just stay with the the amateurs. Like, probably like for, for like boxing. Like, I'll probably branch out and probably, probably design costumes for you know athletes, you know, like boxers and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I'm in that field, so I would try to you know, be in that field that designs costumes and stuff for like boxers, male and female, and try to get an understanding of how they do things. And then I'll just go from there and make money as being a designer as for regular designing and just um, designing for like boxers and stuff like that. Cause they make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like a lot of is when it comes to like designing costumes, like they put, they put up thousands for like, yeah. Costumes, like it's not just like oh, dollars, like yeah, you some know, bread, some bread. yeah, they put us some, some bread. bread. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know, like that fashion money is so different. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this: What's the difference between Anderson Big Clothing and Rob James? Um, I'll say, um, clothing, well, like that's the. The, the creativeness, that's the creativity, the, um, that's the creativity, that's the, the art, and that's just like, yeah, that's the creativity and the art, but Rob James is like the, the solid foundation. Like, without Rob James, there wouldn't be no in Super. So, I'll say, oh, that's yeah. A, okay. Without no Rob James, there wouldn't be no in Super. Ah, okay. <laughs> and you know, um, Rob James is not like Ennis is gonna be big, but I feel like Rob James is gonna be bigger because Rob James is so much that revolves around that name itself. It's not just just the brand; it's multiple things that revolves around that name. So it's gonna be bigger than probably, possibly bigger than Ennis Super, you know. But Ennis Super is still gonna also be big to the point where it'll make millions and millions and Rob James probably might be billions, you know, worth billions one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, you know, looking at your Instagram, reviewing your Instagram and um, seeing a lot of the people that are taking a liking to it. There's a lot of people like checking in on it. I see the pictures, the photo shoot. You, you stay with different photo shoots. You stay mm-hmm. with different models, whether they're young, in between ages or older, I mean, like in the 20s, teens, 20s and up and things like that. I'm not talking about, you know, younger than that. I'm talking about like, you know, I mean, and I do know you have clothing that serve, you know, that you service babies and toddlers and things like that. So I'm assuming you'll have photo shoots with those coming soon as well, in the future, you know, in the future. But just looking at your overall, how things are going with your brand is definitely moving in the right, in the right way, I would say. It's moving to the top. It's moving at a rapid pace. You know, I see people, yeah. um, Mr. Carrington, Bruce um, character shoe shoe, um, 2020 and 2021. I look um, United States Olympic boxer. Um, I see him just drop a nice um, video promo promo video for your for your brand. I was like, okay, you got shoe shoe rocking brand and, and a couple other people rocking a brand. I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty good for Anderson Big. So you know, yeah. 
how, what do you want to do to take it to another level? Is it something that you're looking to do to take it to another level to, to separate yourself from everybody else? Well, to take it to another level, like, um, get like dealing with like fabrics and stuff like that. And also stepping outside of the box and doing things like creating like comic books or get connected to people that can help me put together a cartoon, like my own cartoon series, um, comic book cartoon series. Also like do more, I assumed what well, this year, before this year is over, and the Super will like officially have a kids collection. Like we haven't really had a kids collection like in a lot of people with kids, I know a lot of people with kids and they always in my ear like, oh, you got stuff for kids, da, da, da. And I'm like, nah. But I'm slowly putting together a kids collection because at first, when I first started, I started with just men's clothing. Mm. Then I then started doing my clothing. Then I, now my focus is going to be starting to lean on more like kids clothing, like doing a kids collection where it will be certain designs that's especially, it will be especially just for kids. Like it wouldn't be for nobody else. Like that would just be their, that's their collection right there. Like it wouldn't be the same stuff that I'll have on adults would be the same thing on kids, you know? So it'd be like, like just for kids. And working and here is uh, the first year I'm gonna officially drop my limited edition collection um, which is going to be next year, next month, sorry, next month yeah. for my anniversary of my brand, which my brand was found. What day, what day was that again? October 15, 2016. Okay. That was when my brand was founded and when it launched. So next month, I'm going to officially drop like my limited edition collection and I don't think nobody's ready for it, but you know, I'm gonna put it together and I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be something that's, it's gonna be pricey, you know, it's, it's limited, you know, it's not gonna be something that's accessible, you know, so it's gonna be pricey, so, but it's gonna be worth the money that people's gonna put up for it. Like, it's not gonna just be extremely expensive than it's like something that you could get from anywhere else. Like, it's gonna yeah. be exclusive. so. I'm going to put like my all into it and this month and going into next month, I'm going to be working on it the whole time. And also I got a couple pop-up shops and stuff that's, that's coming. So, you no, know, but the brand, as far as the brand is growing and as far as like people I'm working with, as far as photographers, um, photographers and stuff like that, like they're helping me to, push my brand to another level because people and big name people pay attention to quality. So if you're just putting out anything, they're not going to really pay attention to you. But if they see you putting hard work into your stuff and quality, they're like, okay, like, who is this person? Like, you know, mm -hmm. next to somebody that's watching. So that's brand. It's going to be bigger than, you know, what it is. Now. And I'm three years in and the feedback that I'm getting every single day is like, sometimes I can't even believe it. You know, like I'm really a brand of fashion designer. Like yeah. a couple of years ago, I was buying clothes and my favorite brand was Nike. Mm -hmm. Now you have you know? your own. You do yeah. you have your own. You wear your own. I'm wearing one of them. Yes, yeah. this is a, a, a Super a Kobe special, RIP Kobe Bryant. You know, mm -hmm. yelling the gold right now. Um, with that being said, can you speak more on the pop-up shops and, um, you know, potentially having your own fashion shoe? Fashion yeah. shoe. As far as, like, the pop-up shops, this this month, 27th, I'm going to have a pop-up shop, another pop-up shop in the Bronx, where it's going to be it's a nice lo location. You know, the dates and the fly and everything will be posted, like, on my Instagram and stuff like that. And I'm yeah. also published on October 4th, I believe, which is 
thing is in Queens. It's my first pop up shop I'm doing in Queens. And yeah, you know, and we had a pop up shop not too long ago. It was like a week ago. And it was successful. It was in Canarsie, Brooklyn. And you know, we had to be on our pop smoke. We shook the room. <laughs> <laughs> we shook the room and you know, like did our thing. We came out, we right you know we made sure we we had the crowd you know like everybody that came in the room couldn't resist that table like they was just like oh what's that you know like i didn't know what's that you know so you know people came and supported and showed love and you know it was it was a good feeling to get back in the game like after this whole pandemic being home like to actually yeah. get back. yeah you know. you know going through the coronavirus and everything and having to deal with the social distancing and not really being in contact with individuals. Being a salesman, having your own business, being an entrepreneur is pretty tough. It can be very tough to earn yeah. income. And so, you know, the fact that you still have your your, your um, supporters, people mm -hmm. on your brand and believe in your brand is a great thing. It's a great yeah. thing. Yeah, it definitely is. You know, like, every single time if you have me on social media or like Facebook, you know, like I always shout people out for supporting me, you know, like I think the people that supported me from day one still support me till this day. And even new supporters, I still, I thank them because I wouldn't be where I'm at now if it wasn't for the people that supported me. And the people that's, you know, been in my ear and telling me certain things, like, oh, you know, like even though I'm a fashion designer, I still get feedback from the people around me, like, oh, what you think about this? Like, you know, what you think about that? And when I discuss all of that with the team, you know, we just we we go with well what I at the end of the day I'm the I'm the boss, so you know, like I, I go with what I you know at the end do. of the day, yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day you're gonna make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever is best, but at the same time I take in the feedback and the uh, opinions of everybody else around me and then I channel everything and then I'm like okay boom I got it and then we just put it together and then once the product is finished it's like wow like I can't believe it. it's like it really came out better than I expected yeah it's, it's important to have like a and it was breaking up you said that you said it's important or the importance of what it's important to have a solid team. Oh, it's solid important team. to have a solid team. Gotcha. Solid support system and overall a solid foundation. You know, like all of those things play a factor and solid level. You know? Okay. Yes. That's it. Um, all right. Before I let you go, any, anything you want to share? Before I let you go, like, you know, your social media accounts and all that, where they can follow you, your websites, where they can purchase yeah. the, the, the clothing. You got to make sure you get that out there, you know what I mean? Um, For, like, my socials, on my personal social media, where I also promote the brand and also other things about me, which is on um, my social media, Facebook is Rob James. You just type in Rob James, it'll pop up. You'll see the brand also when you... Once you see the brand, you know it's me. You know, like, I don't think it's another Rob James, you know. <laughs> but they got Rob James. That's my Facebook. Um, as far as Instagram, my Instagram is, um, well, clothing Instagram is Anasupe Clothing Official. And you spell A-N-I-S-U-P-E, Clothing Official. That's the, everything is just straight clothing on that page. And that's for the, the brand. And my personal Instagram is the creative Tensei, Tensei. and it's the is T H E. Well, create the creative T E N S A I I, and that's my um. Well, that's my new Instagram that I just made. The creative Tensei. Tensei, Tensei. Tensei, excuse me. Basically means it basically means the creative genius, but the Tensei per, part is in Japanese. It means genius. And all, and my Twitter is Anasupe Clothing. 
my Facebook business page in the Super 8 Clothing. And also my website is in a super clothing official dot com. A N I S U P E clothing official dot com. So like he just mentioned dropped all his social medias, his Facebook his Facebook business account, the Twitter account, both your social media on pages on Instagram. Um what about your TikTok? <laughs> TikTok. Um, is you famous for your videos on TikTok? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, TikTok is um the official Rob James. That's my TikTok, the official Rob James. Okay. So you took a break from it, but you stay on it. <laughs> yeah. Break from it. <laughs> All right. Well, I thank you for your time, and we hope get this video out. Hopefully, everybody can support your brand as best as possible. Make sure you follow Rob on Instagram. Um, Rob James, make sure you follow his Instagram accounts for not only himself, but also his clothing brand. And, and make sure you hit the website to purchase some great wear. You got t-shirts, you got hats, you got the um, bucket hats, you got the snapbacks, you got hoodies. You got you got everything, man. So, you know, make sure you check them out and the brand is growing. You're going to see sneakers coming soon. You're going to see a, a design for the kids label, kids line coming soon. You know, jeans are probably come in the works. There's going to be a lot of great things taking place in Anderson and Clothing from now, from past, present, and going in the future. All right? All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Catch me on another episode of Shoot the Five with Xavier Porter. All Rob James information is going to be in the bio link. Make sure you come back, like, subscribe, share, comment. Let it be known. Shoot the Five back in the building. Peace. Sure.